A friend of mine who is a painter told me once that you have to perfect the human form before attempting to abstract it, and I thought about that statement a lot as I played Dishonored. As I got familiar with the game, and even more so on my second and third playthroughs, my understanding of the mechanics led to gleeful experimentation that only got more and more creative. Dishonored is a wonderful game, and I'll admit that here at the starting line. You play as Corvo Itano, the former bodyguard of an empress who has been blessed with otherworldly powers and a murder accusation. Controlling him is borderline instinctual, and just how perfectly the gameplay works is a massive plus. The biggest alteration to this standard FPS playstyle here is the powers, most of which feel just as fluid as basic movement. Blink, after hours of gameplay, feels sorely missed when playing other first-person shooters. Blink is also probably the most powerful and useful of the unlockable skills, a completely silent and pretty long-ranged teleport. You can even beat the entire game using only Blink and your sword. The other five powers vary in usefulness depending on how you're going to play through the game, there really aren't many power options for a non-lethal playthrough, but teleporting around, seeing through walls, and freezing time is so goddamn awesome that it's forgivable. Too bad there isn't one to assist in incapacitating enemies without killing them. There are lethal powers, but I never really found a use for them except to get a few achievements and, on this most recent playthrough, just to become an absolute monster. I'm sure it was a nightmare to balance all of these, so I commend them for having them work so well together. The passive abilities are another thing I never really worked on. Except for Double Jump, which is fundamental, the others seem useless for a non-violent playthrough. I never had a use for more health or disappearing bodies, because in an ideal world I was never in combat. Well, the first time I played this was the case. Added to the equipment, which only offers you one non-lethal option besides a chokehold, everything else further pushes you into machine-of-death territory, with stuff like sticky grenades, mines, and incendiary bolts all of which are extremely fun to use, even though non-lethal is more fun and challenging to me personally. My first playthrough was a careful experience, mainly because I felt like the game was bullying me into being nice. The completion screen is a huge point of torment, ever taunting me with empty checkboxes and unfound collectibles. The chaos system is also an ever-looming threat, and playing how you want can be punished. This isn't nearly to the point of Hitman Absolution, which chastised me for killing people who had just slaughtered the workers of an orphanage, but still, a game with the tagline, Revenge Solves Everything, shouldn't give me a high chaos ending for playing in a conservatively violent manner, which I think is just above a 20% kill rate. I eventually shook off this feeling, because it's not entirely good and bad, just little alterations to the game depending on your choices, but when first playing, it can be pretty damn disconcerting. The level design is a fucking triumph. Lady Boyle's Last Party specifically is nothing short of a masterwork, a focused, fascinating, and immaculately detailed piece of entertainment. The high watermark it sets is never really reached again in the game, but all of them warrant a completely different discussion on their own. House of Pleasure and Return to the Tower are the other two that really stand out for me, and the Flooded District being my least favorite. All of them are littered with clues and subtle hints to the locations you should be interested in visiting, fossils of a time before they called in the fucking playtesters and had to scatter objective markers everywhere. The missions are elevated by the consistently stunning art design, which is simple enough to not clutter and distract, but packed with style and clever atmospheric shifts. Most of the time this can be seen all in a single level, the upper streets teeming with mechanical, industrious, authoritarian life, and the lower you go or further off the beaten path you explore, the more ominous and gloomy things get. There is a distinct, unforgettable mood to Dunwall, the design of which picks and melds ideas from about three centuries of architecture, technology, and fashion, but most heavily leans towards the late 1800s in London. It holds a dreamlike quality throughout, not distinctly fantasy but far from reality. The only real complaint I have is that the faces can look a bit weird, but all in all, unbelievably good. The story that leads you through all these locations is largely a mess, most notably falling apart after taking care of the Lord Regent. The objectives are simple, artificially emotional tasks that just serve as an excuse to get you into interesting situations. But a more interesting and entirely optional bit of exposition can be found with the heart, which can reveal secrets about areas and people. The variety of information gained here blends organically into the game and adds depth to those willing to seek it out. The conclusion of the game falls flat, though, with the final meeting with Havelock being especially disappointing, even though the high chaos variant is a bit more exciting. 
This is one of the few games that I actually enjoyed more and more with each playthrough. Its story never tries to be intrusive, but can open up if you spend time immersing yourself in it. Arcane Studios created interesting systems that welcome the player to prod around and experiment. You can tell their primary goal was just to make a fun game, and when it gets it right, it does it better than pretty much anything else out there. I would have loved for levels to be larger, I would have loved for the objective notifications to have been subdued a bit, and I wish there was some kind of new game plus, or just a chance to replay the game with everything I've unlocked, but the quality is only accentuated when I look back at how few complaints I actually had. It all comes down to just how well all these systems work together. It was released in 2012 and feels even more refreshing today. A stimulating exercise in player trust and dedication to an idea. It's a damn near classic that I can't recommend enough. Get to know the game, then try your hardest to break its rules. Where is she? Found her! Quickly, let's get her on board! At last, oh my love, someday you will understand. You'll never know how happy you've made me. Someday she'll learn to appreciate me. After all, she'll have her whole life. <laughs>